Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm back at Plum Island today. It's uh, mid-September now, so a little over a month since the last time I was here. I'm trying to kind of cover this place pretty regularly because it changes throughout the seasons and uh, just so much ground to cover. I'm currently at the southern end of the island. Um, I've worked my way down and I've had a few uh, good sightings along the way. It is kind of crowded on the island, so it's a little bit of an issue for me to find a place to, to film and record myself without having people uh, right next to me. But um, I'm at the beach, as you can see. You can swing around, there's the ocean. Um, it's pretty high tide right now, but still plenty of beach to look at. So yeah, I mean, when I first got here today, I had a nice sighting of some wild turkeys right along the road. They're pretty common in Massachusetts. I've been trying to find some on my home patch and haven't had much luck yet this year, but I do see them like in suburban neighborhoods around my house and so on. But uh, it's nice to find some right along the road here and uh, get them on video and uh, get them on the, on the channel list. Then I stopped at the main pans. Um, these are these salt pans that are right along the road, very shallow, and uh, those were just packed with shorebirds. So we had um, hundreds of semi-palmated plovers, semi-palmated sandpipers, a lot of white rump sandpipers, some black-bellied plovers. That's a bird that we don't have on the channel list yet. I'm not gonna add it, I don't think, because I don't think the footage is close enough. The birds are pretty far away. Some stilt sandpipers, again, maybe I'll add that one. I think I got some pretty decent footage of stilt sandpiper, uh, we'll see. So this black-bellied plover is in non-breeding plumage, obviously, as it doesn't have a black belly. That's what we most often see here in Massachusetts, although occasionally we'll get some that are just coming into or out of breeding plumage and have some black on the belly. So that is probably around a thousand shorebirds all startled into flight by a single merlin, a bird that's slightly smaller than the black-bellied plover we just saw. It's always amazing and kind of mesmerizing to watch a large flock like this fly in formation. I thought I had some video of a stilt sandpiper, but when I downloaded everything off my camera I couldn't find it. I did get this nice photo of a stilt sandpiper just coming out of breeding plumage. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to the channel life list. So then I came all the way down here to the southern end of the island and I'm just walking along the beach. Just five minutes ago I actually had really nice sighting of a whole bunch of shorebirds just roosting on the sand. So nothing really unusual but just nice to get the really good close-up look. So I think semi-palmated plover footage from there um, was really good. I did have that on my home patch, but it was a distant photo, so we'll, we'll add that to the channel list uh, for sure. Sanderlings are another bird I need for the channel list and I'm going to try to get some, some better footage here along the water because I've seen some along the water here. So yes, yeah, so I'll come back with some more sightings, but uh, it's a beautiful day today and uh, we'll see what we see.
ran into a more active flock of semi-palmated sandpipers and sanderlings feeding in the seaweed right along the shoreline and got some some nice videos some nice shots of those so sanderling on the channel list for sure so that's pretty cool Another nice sighting was a juvenile bald eagle that flew over. I did try to get some video. I don't think that came out too well, but I, I got some still shots that I'm sure are gonna come out pretty well. So that was a nice sighting. They have this uh, mottled look to their feathers. That's, uh, that's kind of neat. And of course they're, they're absolutely huge. So actually this bald eagle footage wasn't too bad once I stabilized it. Video of birds in flight is challenging, but it really is enjoyable to watch when it works out. This immature common eider was all by itself close to shore. All the other ones were much farther out. So anyway, it is a very bright sunny day. It's only about nine o'clock in the morning, but already it's um, <laughs> a lot of glare um, to, do, to do filming. Um, I can't really see if I'm videoing myself in any kind of a good way here. Um, because of the glare and it's already kind of tough to photograph the birds unless you get just the right angle. So I'm going to get off the beach now. Beaches are definitely best early in the morning or late at night if you're trying to do uh, birding and photography. So we're going to head um, over to the Hellcat area and see if there's any migrants, see if there's anything happening there. But um, I'm already pretty happy with the footage that I've got today of the shorebirds and a few other things, so uh, no complaints. Okay, I'm here on the Hellcat Dyke, so you can see that extending off behind me, so to my right out here are the massive salt marshes of uh, Plum Island Sound. And to my left over here are the impounds that are created by the dike, which can be really good spots for shorebirds. So I've actually gotten um, some more footage of some different shorebirds. You've got some dowagers. I believe there are both short-billed and long-billed dowagers. So I <laughs> have to go through my footage and see if I can uh, tell the difference. It's, it's very tricky with, with dowagers. So the dowagers that I videoed were in a variety of plumages, including immature birds and adults that were in the process of molting into their non-breeding plumage. It's pretty confusing. I'm sure there were both long-billed and short-billed dowagers present, but I generally wasn't confident about making the call in most cases. I am going to go out on a limb and ID this individual as an adult long-billed dowager in non-breeding plumage. I'm basing that on the plump, chunky body and neck, the curved supercilium that looks like an eyebrow, and the light spotting on the flanks, all of which are good for long-billed rather than short-billed dowager. If you have an opinion on the idea of this bird, please feel free to leave a comment. Another nice spot is a Sora, which has been hanging out here. A bunch of people had their scopes on it. Um, it was not close enough to get any good footage. I think I have one 
photograph, which I'll, which I'll show here. So that's a new year bird for me, new bird for my year list. Um, unfortunately, not really able to get it, any, any great footage of it, but, but a cool bird to see. So actually just a, a really fantastic day for, for shorebirds in terms of diversity and numbers. Um, I could wish that for some of them I could get closer and get some better footage. That's always an issue here at Plum Island, but um, really just uh, fantastic to see so many of them around. Um, it's been a fun day. There's been merlins flying through, trying to attack the shorebirds. There's been ospreys going over. So just a lot going on here. Beautiful uh, early fall day here at Plum Island. Okay, I am done for the day. In fact, I've actually come off the island a little ways. I'm at the Plum Island Visitor Center, which is located a little bit away from the island. And I'm um, just saying goodbye. Um, it's been a good day. It was very quiet for passerine species, so you know, barely any warblers or sparrows or anything like that, but I didn't really look too hard for them. Um, I know because of the way the winds have been that we weren't gonna see a lot of that. So take what the weather gives you and uh, what birds are there. And so I have a lot of footage to sort through, so I'm not really sure what this video is going to end up looking like, but um, it certainly was a day packed with shorebirds and another nice day out. So if you've made it this far, appreciate your watching, and I'll see you in the next one.